Six Nations 2021, the second game after we see Italy host France. It's the Calcutta Cup with England hosting Scotland from Twickenham. It's been a long time since Scotland got a win in Twickenham, if what I read is to be believed. It goes all the way back to 1983. Now, they got close. They got close in 2019 with that 38-all draw. That's a long, long time to not get a victory uh, over in England. So England will certainly be looking to maintain that unbeaten record of 30, almost 40 years. Uh, and Scotland, well, Eddie Jones is talking this up as being their biggest game. I always want to beat the English, so we'll see if he is right and they're able to really step up for this one because it's certainly going to be a big challenge against the defending champions. Add to the fact that it's the 150th anniversary of these two teams first playing, which is an awesome thing when you think about it. That's a bloody long time, even longer than 1983, but... Yeah, should be a good game. No crowd is obviously going to take a bit away from it. That's just the current state of being, but we can all just be thankful that there's Six Nations and international rugby on this weekend to keep us entertained. Uh, it is at Twickenham. It's February 6th. That's the Saturday. Local kickoff is 4.45, which makes it 5.45 over here in the morning in New Zealand. I am tempted to get up and watch it live. Maybe do a live stream because that's kind of doable, just barely. If I can crawl out of bed at that time of the day. But anyway, I'll go over the squads quickly, the predictions, uh, and you guys can let me know how you think this one is going to go. Now, obviously, England have got a few a few big names out. They, they had Marla pull out of the squad, and there's no Makov Unipola. So you got Alice Genge starting at loose head. If he's the third choice guy, he's not a bad, bad man to have a third choice, man. Baby Rhino. He's a proper devastating ball running prop, which is not something every prop can do. But obviously his core job is going to be to scrum well. And to be honest, I do like the look of both of those Scottish props. So he's got a big task ahead of him. Uh, he's got Jamie George and Will Stewart alongside him. So in terms of the props, uh, I haven't actually checked how many caps Alice Gen just got. Would it be in the 20s or am I dreaming? But uh, I don't know, man. Xander Ferguson and Rory Sutherland up against them maybe fancy themselves against this one uh you guys who watch uh the premiership will be able to tell me how you reckon stuart george and genge will go but it's certainly going to be an area where they'll be put under a bit of pressure good challenge for them uh etoje and johnny hill are your locks etoje is definitely one of the first names off any team sheet um it would have been nice to see launchbury but obviously he's not available but i, I mean johnny hill's Good, but I, th I think I like the look of Launchbury with Atoje a wee bit better. Uh, Wilson's in at six, Tom Curry's in at seven, and Billy V is in there at number eight. It's uh, it's another one without Sam Underhill. Like, there are a few spots in this England team where they are missing a few of their traditional Eddie Jones stalwarts, right? So, I mean, Wilson's a, a proper... What's the word? I was going to say grub but he's not a grub he's not like dan coles over here in new zealand he's a, a grafter i oh, know man brutal brutal hard working player no nonsense definitely so he's going to want to make the irish irish scottish guys uh, a bit of a misery in this one and the irish if he gets the chance to play against them a bit later uh ben youngs and farrell Owen farrell who's captain that's a pretty experienced 9 10 combo uh, there's no George Ford in the starting lineup this week. He is relegated to the bench. Ollie Lawrence gets a crack at 12, which is very good news because from what we've seen of him limited time in the England jersey, he's kind of stepped up without faltering at all. He's looked he's looked pretty good. I know England have not... He's got the 12 jersey on his back. He's not exclusively stuck in that same spot. They do move him around the pitch a bit, especially when they had Jonathan Joseph playing in the same lineup. They tend to do a bit of swapsies. But, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see his positioning for this one. Slade's there at 13. And uh, Eddie Jones in his press conference was talking up the value of his big left boot to get them out of a wee bit of trouble. Uh, plus, you got Watson and Elliot Daly there at fullback. And Scotland will have to be careful because Daly can punish you with the boot, again, from, from very long distance. The bench, Cowan Dickey, Obano, Harry Williams, Laws. It's good to see him back. Um, Earl... Robson, Ford, and Mellons. Mellons or Malins. Uh Robson is maybe a bit of a safe pick. We would like to see Harry Randall. 
but give it time this is a pretty high pressure cooker match so maybe it's it's best to go with a wee bit of experience yeah we'll see uh for scotland like i mentioned xander fagus and rory sutherland i i very much like the look of this scottish front row they've been i don't want to say demolishing but at least putting other scrums under a lot of pressure in the last year a year and a half when these guys are together very very good where they're kind of the opposite of england where england's got that super experienced hooker and jamie george and maybe two lesser experienced props you got george turner i think they said it's his six nations starting debut or was it competition debut because i mean you got mcanelli and brown who are uh, regular picks for scotland and neither of them is available so a bit of pressure on him maybe line out time more than scrum time but we will see uh cummins and johnny gray are familiar lock and duo Richie and Watson, likewise, that's pretty much the equivalent of Underhill and Curry for um, for Scotland, isn't it? Because it's pretty much always those two guys, plus an additional one, whoever gets to play number eight, and this time it is Matt Fagerson. And I think he might be the guy. Like, I know they've tried a bunch of guys. Uh, Magnus Bradbury's been in there. They've had um, Blade Thompson. Like, they've had a few guys flirt with that number eight position, eh? But maybe Matt Fagerson is, is the guy long term. It's a good chance for him to to test himself against the likes of Billy Vunipola, which is a big challenge as well. Ali Price and Finn Russell, 19 combo. If any game where you get to see Finn Russell play, it's probably worth the price of admission. So, yeah, expect to see some kind of mad slick pass from him. Uh, Redpath gets his debut straight off the bat. No mucking around. As soon as he accepted the call-up from Scotland, he's straight into the starting lineup at 12. Chris Harris, a bit more experienced outside him at 13. Uh, Duhan van der Merwe, the big unit, is there on the left wing. Again, price of admission-wise, he's a pretty good a pretty good guy to see. He generally gets over the advantage line being such a big human. Uh, Sean Maitland, likewise, at the other end of the experience cap, he's at the tail end of his career. Uh, very reliable guy. And he should know some of those Saracens guys inside out. And uh, Stuart Hogg is captain at fullback. I think Eddie Jones has been putting a bit of pressure on him in the press conferences as well, uh, whether he can handle the pressure and whatnot. David Cherry will get his debut if he comes on. A hooker, uh, Kibble and Nell are your backup props. Richie Gray, good to see him back in the Scotland lineup, is on the bench as well. Gary Graham, people have been saying he's been playing really well. I haven't seen much of him in recent times, so... Uh, keen to see him get some minutes. Scott Steele, Jakob van der Volt, and Hugh Jones. So, yeah, we wee bit of pressure on for Scotland because there's always that feeling that they should be doing slightly better than they are. But I'm not sure if that's just me listening to too much Scottish media or if that's me genuinely thinking... I genuinely look at their squad and think they've got classy players in many, many positions and depth as well. So, mm, and England without some of their regular starters under Eddie Jones. Is it a chance they're vulnerable or am I just dreaming? Maybe I'm just dreaming. I've been wearing the Scottish jersey too long. Um, last five games on the board, you got three England wins. That's 2020, 18, 17, no, not 18, 17 and 16. 2018 was the Scottish win at Murrayfield, 25, 13. And then the draw I mentioned earlier in 2019 at Twickenham. Average scores 28, 20 to, to England over Scotland. So... Generally, England are at least a try and a little bit over over Scotland. 1983 is a long time ago, but some of these guys would have been in that 38 all draw. So they've gone to Twickenham and not lost the game before. Maybe mentally that's an edge. I don't know. Rugby forecast. The algorithm has England by 11. And the bookies over here in New Zealand anyway have got England by 15. So predicted to be fairly comfortable without being a walkover for Eddie Jones and his guys. It will be an interesting one to watch. Like I mentioned, I think I have to watch this one live because I'm at pretty high risk of getting spoiled by New Zealand's radio or something if I, if I don't. So I will endeavor to get out of bed. You guys let me know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to go. Uh, remember, Six Nations games, you can watch them on ITV and BBC for free for you guys in the UK. If you're outside the UK... Uh, you can use a VPN to jump on um, and just watch the games, which is always helpful. But, um, yeah, you guys take care. Let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later. Remember, guys, if you want to watch the Six Nations 2021, the games are being streamed 
uh, live and on demand on sites like ITV for some of the games in the UK, BBC for the other games in the UK, or alternatively uh, on Virgin's service uh, in Ireland. They're all free. And if you're outside of those territories, you can jump on with the VPN. So you can see Six Nations Championship is listed here this weekend for ITV. Likewise, they've got it on Virgin Media. You can see here I am connected to VPN. I'll put a link in the description for Express. That's the one that I use. Uh, they got 30 day money back guarantee, so they're pretty good. And I can essentially, sitting here in New Zealand, jump onto ITV's site. And although there are a few ads, uh, I can watch their service. And uh, likewise, if I switch over to Ireland, essentially I can do uh the same thing with the irish server so either way um whichever site you want to watch on be it ireland or be it the sites um in the uk itv bbc whatever it is it's pretty convenient guys especially if you don't have access where you're at so yep like i said the link is in the description for uh for express vpn this pancake cheese and as i said i've used them before and they're always uh, pretty reliable. So, um, yeah, check it out, guys. Talk to you again soon.